You into a little May-December action? Because maybe she's not your cousin. I mean, if she is, she's a little bit more removed than the rest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what are the scars from? Look at her. Look at his body. I mean, other parts. It's shut now, girl. They said bye. Best of luck to you. Mind the skulls. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and I am back with a brand new show. This one, I was very much on the fence about whether or not I wanted to react to it, but I was like, you know what? I am gonna watch it. It looks fun. It's only eight episodes, so why don't I just jump on in? And thankfully, they dropped them all at once, so no more of this week-to-week -week waiting like I've had to do with so many of my shows lately. And it is an Amazon Prime show. It is Fallout, and I believe this is based loosely on the video game of the same name. And I know very little about this because I did not play Fallout, but I remember when the Fallout game came out, a lot of my gaming friends were into it. Anything that's a first person shooter, I can't play it. I'm one of those people where if I try to play an FPS, I get really nauseous. So sadly, a lot of games just don't get to be played by me and Fallout was one of them. But I do remember it being somewhat about a dystopian post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic world uh, after there's a nuclear explosion and then basically you're like a scavenger, I think. You play as like a, your character's like a scavenger that goes around and tries to like survive but also has to take out baddies. I believe it was a cooperative game too so you can play with other people. So as I said, I know so little. I know so very little. So I'm going into this pretty fresh. But either way, I'm excited to jump in and see what it's all about. So I don't think there's much else to say since like I said, I don't know much about this premise. I, I know a handful of the actors that are gonna be in this but I'm ready to be entertained. So I'm going to jump in. But just before I do, if this is your first time in my channel, welcome. Thank you for coming. I do a lot of reactions here to all kinds of good stuff. And if you'd like to be notified of when I do updo uploads, not updates, uploads of this show or anything else that I might be watching, please go ahead and join the fam. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be in the know. And I also appreciate it so much when you show some love to this video with those likes and comments. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. I love that the first episode's called The End. That's fun. And it goes down. The White House had no comment about the president's whereabouts. So is this in the 50s, it looks like? Looking at the garb and the technology? Specter of nuclear war facing this nation for 10 long years is his final She said enough of that. Okay, this is a fictitious story. Or a city. Why the hell is Cooper Howard? Working kids' birthday parties. Why not? What else? Alimony. Oh, damn. What'd they say, Dad? And I'm lucky to have such a good helper like you. Hmm. Oh, Coop, Coop, Coop. Do your thumbs up. I am not. Yeah, you know, you're performing right monkey. Not to us, all right? Exactly. Pleasure's all mine, ma'am. I hope your son had a lovely birthday. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Who's ready for cake? Oh. Your husband's a dick. That was unsaid, but they both they both said it. Oh, it's okay, Muffin. You don't want to be friends with this kid anyways. Dad's a jerk. She's been riding that rope for like 10 minutes. Why wouldn't you do it? The thumbs up. Oh, honey, when you get older, you have to learn about things like emotional damage and pride. If they ever drop a really big bomb, I'm going to tell you to hold up your thumb just like this. And if the cloud is smaller than your thumb, now you run for the hills. And if it's bigger than your thumb? Well, you're not going to survive, honey. They told us not to bother running. Yeah. Do you think it's going to happen? Oh, honey. Why are we talking about this? Us cow folks would take it as a comp, right? Why do I feel like something bad's going to happen to this little girl, guys? I'm not okay. My heart. Oh, my gosh. She's going to have to do the thumb thing, isn't she? Oh. So quick. Please be smaller All than right, your thumb. Well, is it your thumb yeah. or mine? Y'all have a bomb shelter? Oh, she's so precious. No. That's smoke, Janie. It's just a fire. You sure? No, you didn't see the flash of light. No, that is not smoke. That's fire in that. Please hide, run, try. This imagery, everyone just serene inside. Why are you, oh, I want to say, why are you standing there? I don't know what I would do. I'd probably be in shock too. Oh, here it comes. I knew it. I'm like, these rich people have to have a shelter. I knew it. Wow. Something I knew he was going to treat you like that, my brother. 
Run, horse, run like your literal life depends on it, because it does. Sir, why are you going towards the city? Oh, not another one. And another one? Wow, okay. Well, if we survive that, that's a miracle. I would have knocked out the jerk and taken his shelter. I'm gonna be real. 219 years later. Science skills. Obviously, mine are nothing compared to my dad's, but I always relish a challenge. What's up, Kyle? Fencing Team C. Intermediate Phys Ed. And I dabble in riflery. Why would you be shooting underground? I have been unable to find a suitable marriage partner. At least one I'm not related to. And we have rules about that. For, for a reason, yes. In the middle, isn't that the lady from, uh... To participate in the triennial trade with Vault 32. Trade, okay. And the girl in the middle, was, wasn't she in, uh... She was in Deadpool, isn't she the blind woman? Pretty sure that's her. And he was in Shang-Chi. He was the guy vlogging in the bus. Thanks, guys. Be well. Hello, Lucy. Okay, she dolled up. She looking for a man. Oh, damn, you just show up ready to marry on the spot? All right. Oh, how many people have worn it before? On my wedding night, that dress got off almost as fast as Bert did. Damn, that's very, it's too much. After 10 years of cousin stuff, I'm definitely excited for the real thing. I don't think I want to know what cousin stuff is. Is that a painted wall? Yeah, it is. Looks convincing though. Oh, projection, even better. Why do we have to wear numbers? Little sugar bomb. Sugar bomb? It's an interesting nickname. Well, I'd never step foot outside Vault 31. Oh, okay, so it's the vault number. Okay. The moment I met your mother, from that moment on, Vault 31 was a distant memory. I'm glad it worked out for you. So you don't even get to meet them? You just t just chuck your kid on over and wish for the best? I don't know about that. And as for his looks? Who knows? Big butt, no butt. I mean. He could be a cannibal or just like cramps. What's yours? Norman. Sorry, Dad. That's a brother for you. That part you probably won't miss as much. Textbook Tumblr Jam. It's gonna take some time to fix. Probably better. She's like, out of my way, plebe. What's going on? Lucy, I love you. Oh, God. Messing around with your cousin, it's all well and good for kids, but it's not a sustainable long-term Can we not keep revisiting this? It's very Game of Thrones. Yeah. Push the damn button, you pervert. We lost a lot of good people, but this trade will help us get back on our feet. Yeah. AKA, she expects you to pop out numerous babies. In exchange, we offer you a breeder. So. Where is said breeder? Please don't be scary. Please don't be scary. I'm Lucy. Do you have a name? Monty. Not bad. Not bad at all. Ma'am, you're married. <laughs> I mean, facts, though. Homie is starving. So what's your sperm count? Wow. Okay. Well, you know what? We're already married. Sperm is pretty important in perpetuating America. <laughs> so. She doesn't know what else to say. What else do you talk about after the apocalypse? Well, Fairy 2 is looking kind of rough. Kind of ragtag. I feel like they're going to take over. Into darkness. Soon. If our measurements yeah, I don't trust her. I think the old overseer died because they took over. Hostile takeover time. Desperation. Violence. Lawlessness. Mm-hmm. These survivors will Yeah, 32 need is not legit. I feel hope. That's nice. I think everything's about to go horribly wrong. Yeah, that's what I think. I think 32, they're, infil they're plants. They infiltrated 32, killed everybody, and now they're gonna come in here and do the same because they want to push everyone to the surface because they're jealous. When you feel Seriously, cousin bro, find somebody else. Oh, you into a little May-December action because maybe she's not your cousin. I mean, if she is, she's a little bit more removed than the rest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Show me to my new home. So I can infiltrate further and destroy it. Mm-hmm. Yep, and the brother notices it. He knows something's off. Say something. We have everything with the hand-me-downs, an icebox, a blender. They, they even gave us. Wow, okay. Guess you get to find out that sperm count yourself. Okie dokie. He's a bad man. 
Coffee what are the scars eye. from? Look at look at his body. I mean, other parts. Cause where did he get the scars from? This doesn't look like the kind of society people get hurt in. Where are you going? I don't think you should be going there by yourself. Stop it. Mm hmm. They destroyed everything. And you, instead of going back and looking for help. Ah, oh, sis, it must have been good. Because you are blind. Ew. Yeah, there's no, there hasn't been anyone living here for a while. They were just waiting for someone to open the door. Oh my God, what do they do to the babies? What, is that person blue? No, just dead, okay. Yep, radioactive, and you're just looking at that now? You really need to, like, you should have looked past the genitals. I'm so sorry, honey, on your wedding night, too. Mm. Ow. I really hope he had zero sperm count for your, for your sake, sis. Just so you know, this was the best day of my life. I don't believe you. Good girl. You're gonna have to do it for real, sis. You can't hesitate. I said to do it for real. You can't be doing these baby slashes. There you go, like you mean it. Keep going. Worst wedding night ever. Don't pull it out, don't pull it, don't pull it out, don't. Now you're gonna bleed out. Quick thinker, that's good. What's in the syringe? Antibiotics, I hope, because that knife looked dirty. She's gonna feel like this is all her fault. Hopefully not, but I can see it happening because if she hadn't had the wedding. Yeah, I'd switch out if I were you. You don't want to be close quarters right now. Not the jukebox. So the question is, what is the story behind the Raiders? Are these people who were left out on the surface, expelled, kept out, refused? Get that jelly mold out of here! <laughs> oh, they're just doing their... Oh, God. That was overkill. You may see a Thank God for him. Ma'am, you need to stop hesitating. Shoot first, think later. Well, there goes the 3D back wrap. Oh, her hubby. Oh, I hope they don't hurt her. No, ma'am, you're pregnant. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, badass mama. She said fork in my eye. Where? Sir, please don't make me use force. Great. He's also a junkie. You? So now you've locked them in there with you. She said, not my baby brother, let's go. Oh, she protected him, interesting. Where's her dad? No way this man's still alive, how? Finish it this time for the love of God. Finish it! Sorry, very violent, but we gotta be, see? Finish it! Use the end of the shovel. The end, because this guy, to survive what he just did, they're on something out there. Not the pickles. What are you guys gonna eat? Dad was stone cold with it. I think I know who you are. Everyone knows who I am. You're not that important, relax. But do they know who they are? Oh God, is this time for an existential crisis? So I'm gonna offer you a choice, them or her. Me! I don't know. We have to, we don't wanna stop. You are my world. Selfish. 
There's a whole pregnant woman there. Okay. I told you he was gonna die. Where are you taking him? To the real world. You should see it sometime. Don't think I want to. You gave me such a warm introduction to it. Yeah, she's just gonna hopefully vow to kill you one day, ma'am. Ma'am, get away from the glass. It's a bomb. I'm really hoping she becomes more observant in the future because so far we're getting zero, zero points. Zero out of a hundred so far. All right, now we're doing group punishment. Uh, what's going on here? Gang violence. Maximum. Oh, good, a cult flag. Wow, really? The kids? I mean, I guess if you're inhaling radiation all day, smoke's the least of your problems, huh? But 200 years, how long does it take to dissipate? Can you identify this relic? Uh, you have no idea. Unless you know what to find and preserve, you are more useful as a corpse. All right. I don't know what this school of hell is, but I don't think it's offering anything of use at the moment. Is what that? Looks like a plane, maybe? And we've got exoskeletons! What kind of model is that? It's the T-60. Imagine getting to it kind of reminds me of, um... Whatchamacallit, that other video game. Halo, those kind of suits. Why are these people in weird culty robes? What's going on here? Oh, here I thought they were playing Battleship. <laughs> They're trying to pick. Is a picture? Tree duty is a two-person job. I said, come on. Well, shit isn't going anywhere. He's gotten his nose broken twice in an hour. Maybe he should stick to his job. So they crap in tires? I don't think you should touch it. I think that's enough. You've seen it. Now go back to work. Flashback. Oh, what a little cutie pie. Aspirin Dane? Mm hmm. This was my idea. He didn't want it. Come with me. Well, at least they didn't leave him out to dry. Now go to work. Y'all so awestruck didn't even hear someone walking up on you. Squire. Tonight, Titus, I get this. We're going to the wild. Yes! <laughs> but that's probably the one person that's looking out for my man Maximus. You better learn to fight, bro. I don't know what to tell you. Run. Oh, Don't be jealous. It's probably not a good thing. I feel like it's just sacrificial lambs. And you broke it. Ew, just your bare hand? I'd rather die. Go wash your hands immediately. Why? What the hell? Who did that? That was on purpose. Wait, they think Maximus did it? Did Maximus? Would Maximus do it? I don't know if I'm not enough about him to know. Just starting over? Is that what we're doing? Just pretending that never happened? Are you sure that's clean? We send a search party to the surface to find my dad. To the surface? We can yeah, four they're... people from farm duty for up to two I weeks. I don't think even. anyone's gonna wanna do that. We're all hurting right now. But our first priority has to be to maintain the security I mean, I feel like world. that's pretty much already been breached, no? Let's move on. They don't wanna find dad. No, they don't. She's going out there by herself. Oh, your head. <laughs> that makes more sense. I don't think you have enough ammunition. Just saying. Four was barely enough last time. Mm -hmm. You had one job. One job. How's he getting back down? Can he open that elevator without him? I guess as long as he's there. I'm bringing him home. Live long and prosper. You're assuming your dad's still alive. They might have taken him out as soon as he got to the surface. 
Venture into the unknown, Lucy. Be braveth. Are you mad? A little young bit. Lady, come back here right away. I'm not young lady. Lucy! Run, girl, you're letting all the radiation in. And like no suit or anything. It's shut now, girl. They said bye. Best of luck to you. Mind the skulls. Oh, well, that's okay. Are oh, y'all in Cali? That looks like maybe it's supposed to be um Santa Monica Pier. Yeah, or it was. We expect you to give us the truth. Why did you join the Brotherhood? Brotherhood, okay. I understand you're a friend of Aspirin Dane. You're aware of their injury? Yes. Do you know who did it? That's the question. No, I, 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 I. Why are we I stammering so much? Speak. I, I didn't, I didn't do it. I did not. I. You're looking awfully guilty. Is all I'm saying. You know. I mean, I want to believe you, but. You have anything else to say? In your defense. Can I be put on anything but latrine duty? Anything else? If I can help the Brotherhood make it better, even if it means giving my own life, I'll do it. How about right now? Please don't hit him across the nose again. And you will be Knight Titus, new squire. Hmm, and that's what we wanted, wasn't it? Maximus Maximus. I don't know, he might have done it. We don't know his backstory yet, so I won't judge too harshly yet. They asked if it was you. Was it? Yeah, they asked me the same thing. I told him you wouldn't hurt a fly. I don't think you know him like that, because I think he would. I think there's a lot of rage in that kid. We saw that last night with the toilet. It is your most sacred duty to protect the Brotherhood. Oh, I don't like this. Why are you taking my clothes off? What's going on? Don't be branding me or nothing. Yep, you're getting branded. Nope, no thank you. As a black person, I refuse to be branded, ever. Nope, I don't care what the cause. Give me a crisp high five. And the denizen of the Enclave has escaped. What's the Enclave? And that he has with him an object of profound potential. That mousy man? Not the dog, what the dog do? Yeah, he's way too happy. I, I think he might have done it, guys. A baby leg? Okay, whoever's partying, they're partying awfully loud if they didn't hear that. Don Pedro has our friend dug up once a year, cuts some pieces off and puts it right back in the ground. So he's still alive? Oh. Wow, that's morbid. Oh, you said you knew this guy. I said I knew of him. Yeah, it's very important conjecture. Our little friend. A rooster? A feral goon can't abide a chicken. That sounds a lot like a myth. I have a sneaking suspicion this is our guy from the beginning of the show, right? <laughs> yeah, it looks like him. Why, well, this is an Amish production of the Count of Monte Cristo. This is the weirdest circle jerk I've ever been invited to. How many have you been invited to? Yeah, now somebody made a run from the Enclave. It ain't where they's running from. I figured you'd be interested in It's where they's running to. Which is? Dead witch. Moldy. That's where you from, ain't it? Many, 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 many moons ago. How about we put you right back in that hole so Don Pedro can have his fun with you for the next 30 years? I mean, he's already out of the box. I think if you wanted to do something, you should have done it already. I do this shit for the love of the game. That weird, weird gun. Okay, well, Honcho's crew's down. The ghoul. Formerly known as the cowboy. I wonder what happened to his little, what his little kid? Did his daughter die? I hope she made it. It's right here. Was your last job. Damn. That's cold. Really? 
the other one's got a quick death and he's got a rot in a grave. That's mean. And the only one left standing is the chicken. That's actually hilarious. Well played. All right. Okay, guys. Well, well, that was the first episode of Fallout and uh, discombobulating, I think would be the best word to use. Um, it's, we have a few people we're focusing on. We got three name, three title cards. We got one for Lucy. We got one for Maximus and one for the ghoul who we saw at the beginning of the show and I've already forgotten his name. But we, uh, from what we can gather there, you know, this, I don't know, the time period, like I said, is a little bit iffy, but I'm guessing that at the beginning of the show, we were sitting somewhere in the circa mid, late fifties to early sixties. And, um, and during that time, there definitely was a lot of talk of nuclear war that was very much on the minds of a lot of Americans back then. And there, there definitely were people that were building bunkers just in case that happened because I think, yeah, that was shortly after World War II. And so uh, after what happened to Japan or happened in Hawaii via Japan, a lot of Americans were get very concerned about something like that happening closer to mainland U.S. soil. And so I guess they're just kind of exploiting that time period for this particular show. We saw that the ghoul, as a, back when he was still a human, was it uh, looks like some form of a celebrity who eventually got to the point where he was doing that what would you call it um novelty work i guess you could say and he was doing that with his daughter and uh yeah things didn't look like they were going so good i guess he's a divorcee because we heard that one man say he was doing it because he has to pay alimony and uh then we see that uh he was told when he was still in the military that the, the whole thumb thing right around you know how to know whether or not you're in trouble and then right after that we see that Someone came and dropped a lot of bombs, multiple bombs. Uh, and it looks like they were in California. I'm just looking at what, actually, no, I don't, yeah, it, it was California because the ocean wasn't too far. But anyways, that's how we started things off. And so we got our setting for the world as we know it. Um, that was 215 years prior. And then we joined the world again, 215 years later. And we see that there have been societies that have lived underground. It looks like almost from the beginning or maybe from the beginning and that they're all in these different bunkers. And we focus in here on Lucy, that's when we meet her. And she's in number 33. And apparently I'm assuming there's at least 33 of these different bunkers. I don't know if they're all in Cali or if they're spread out across the nation, we don't know. But either way, it looks like they just basically stay in these places, hunker down. And then eventually the time comes when they have to start crossbreeding. And because most silos are families, uh, we see that she has to go and look for somebody in another silo to to marry. And it's a blind marriage because they don't, outside of it sounds like they do what you call them, telegrams. There's no communication between these pods, which is very interesting. Or maybe not through everyone. Maybe it was just from the, the overseers. But either way, uh, we're introduced to Lucy. And, uh, and I like the way that her interview for marriage is what gives us as an audience the background on her, her skill set, what she's been doing. And we find out that she's very well-rounded, very capable. And that's probably because she's the overseer's daughter. And then, yeah, she wants to get married because she's basically like, I can't, there's no one left in my silo. <laughs> like she said, there's no one left in her silo that's not a direct relative. So they set her up and it looks like they only open up these valves in between these silos for what, for a person to person exchange. And they do this. And unfortunately, as we see, it, it's not what we think. It is actually a raider attack. And again, I just feel like I saw it, you know, it started off, of course, with her brother noticing that something was off about these people. But then the next thing I noticed was the tats the scars. And if you look at everybody else, they're all pristine and clean. And again, if you've been living underground your whole life with no exposure to, you know, a lot of the elements, so to speak, you probably weren't going to be scarred up, right? Very, very hard for you to get hurt badly in that situation. You see a lot more people with those things if that was the case. So unfortunately, my girl Lucy was too um, awestruck by the cuteness of her potential husband that she didn't really take the time to look at the fact that as I pointed out in the episode, he had scars all over his back, scars on his face, like no questions. Like, how did that happen? What were you doing? Like, how is it that you're all like this? But anyhow, uh, things go bad quickly. And Lucy figures out that the radar attack is happening and she ends up having quite her little battle with her new husband. And uh, she does manage to make it out, but it's carnage, right? They lose a good chunk of the people in there. And we find out their leader, Moldova, what was her name again? Madiva? I can't remember her name, but there's a leader in there. And she's the 
one who orchestrated this. And eventually they do subdue everyone and they get the overseer. And she basically says to the overseer that he's got to make a hard choice. That she said the reason why that they're down there is because of a tricky choice was her, I think is what she said. And then she gives him the ultimatum of saving um, or protecting his daughter, like making sure she didn't get killed or saving everybody else and possibly letting her get hurt. So he chooses his daughter, but again, I think it's because he assumed that the rest of them would be able to escape the blast most likely. And she takes him, she drugs the father and she takes him saying, I'm taking him to the surface. And then she looks at Nusi and says, you look like your mother, which is something that, is, that her father said earlier that day. So clearly this woman knew who her mother was. I'm seeing, I'm assuming there's some beef there. I'm not sure. I don't know if this woman who is leading the Raiders, like I said, I'm trying to figure out what the Raiders story is. Are they exiles? Were they never allowed down there in the first place? Was there like some kind of a revolution? Like there's clearly a backstory there, but either way, clearly the leader of that rebel party knew her father, knew Lucy's dad and knew Lucy's mom. And there's no word yet as to what happened to Lucy's mom either. I'm going with the assumptions that they're speaking in past tense that she passed away, but they didn't show us anything like that or say anything. So it's a possibility to me that maybe she's on the surface as well. Maybe we'll have to see. But yeah, we have Lucy after that happens. She wants to go and find her father because obviously he was kidnapped and taken against his will. But we see, of course, the people in the silo are like, yo, like, why would we go up there? Why are we going to risk going out to the surface when it's not our dad, basically, right? And uh, it's understandable. I, I get it. I don't think many people there have Lucy's adeptness at, at fighting. We saw that actually. Quite a few of them couldn't fight. So, and plus, uh, you know, we got a pregnant woman there and a lot of people who were quite wounded. So anyways, they deny Lucy's uh, request to go out there and search for him but she just decides she's gonna do it on her own anyways because otherwise it's never gonna happen so she goes and uh she's out there on her own now for the first time ever and i'm assuming she knows what she's doing because we saw that uh, she had a radioactivity meter on her arm and my guess is that there's still quite a bit of radiation on the surface that she's maybe never been exposed to so that'll be interesting but we see that she's right near the coastline and that seems to be what she feels confident with following to get wherever she needs to go so lucy's out there and we're going to see what she encounters in this brave new world and then we were introduced to maximus there was less of him in this episode but we found out that there is a whole cultish type of paramilitary group that's out outside there. They go call themselves the Brotherhood. I'm seeing semblances of religion, semblances of old school, like knighthood and royalty, etc. So we didn't get a lot of info, but those are the things I just picked up by costuming and the, and the wording that they've been using. And apparently it looks like they just take in, I think they were all boys for the most part, boys or um, people who are more masculine presenting anyways, and they train them up. And eventually if they're fortunate, they get to go with these knights who are these huge armored individuals. I'm assuming that there are people in there. And we see that Maximus is not doing well in this environment. He's getting bullied and he's being put on all the, you know, the, the literal crap jobs. And we don't really know what his objective is, what he wants, why he got there. Like we've only got a few flashbacks to his, his past. One of which is when apparently one of these knights came to him as a child. So yeah, I don't know what his whole deal is yet. We weren't really told, but we do know we were able to pick up or infer that he doesn't like it where he's at and he wants to get out of there. And working with a knight was a, one of his objectives, clearly. And when his friend gets selected and he's not, we see him like literally throw a tantrum. And then right after that, his friend mysteriously gets a blade in his boot. And it's so bad that it cuts right up to like right through their heel. But anyways, uh, everyone assumes or everyone blames Maximus for this. And like I said, I can't really tell by Maximus's response whether or not he is guilty, but I think something is, I mean, I do believe that he wanted it. Like what he said is like, I didn't do it, but I did want it to happen. Again, I don't think he meant he wanted his friend to be hurt per se, but he wanted his friend to not go. I think Maximus either wanted his friend to stay or for both of them to go. He didn't want a situation where they were split up. So anyways, he says all the lines and the words that are necessary to whoever that guy was, one of looks like one of their priests. And then he says, okay, fine. Well, we're going to give you the spot instead of your friend. So um, Maximus is now going with, what was his name? I can't remember the name of the night. Starts with a T anyways. And he's now branded, which again, like I said, a little disturbing. But anyhow, he gets branded and now he's going with him because they're searching for this person who has escaped the Enclave. We have no idea what the Enclave is at this point, but apparently it's well known. 
and this person, I guess, wasn't supposed to leave. So they left and uh, this person left and they brought a dog as well. And now these knights are out there looking for them. And my guess is either to capture or take out. We don't know yet. So that's another thing we learned about this world. There's an enclave. We don't know what the enclave does, what it wants. Sounds like they've got a lot of power and that uh, they might have knowledge and understanding of the old world and old world tech. And maybe that's why they're scared of this guy leaving with that information. So yeah, that was what we got on Maximus. And so he's off and running with these knights and we'll have to see what happens. My guess is this is how he's going to probably, I, I feel like him and Lucy are going to cross paths. I'm not sure, but that would be one way for that to happen. And then finally, we have the ghoul at the very end. And as I said, I had a feeling we were coming back to the guy from the front. I do know from the, because I did see uh, the trailers for the show. So I know that. The guy from the beginning ends up having no nose and everything. So I'm like, it's gotta be him. There's gotta be a reason they've shown us him at the beginning way back when and show him now. So I'm like, the only way that could happen 215 years later is that something has happened. And now we know that in this world that apparently there are mutants and I'm guessing this is people who got directly blasted with that radiation. And yeah, it, they can somehow survive. And I don't know if that's because of just the radiation or whatever the heck they had in those IVs, but either way, he's still here. And it looks like he's definitely not the guy that we saw way back when. Like I said, I've got questions. What happened to his daughter? Is she like him? Did she just unfortunately not make it? Yeah, I'm wondering what happened over the last 215 years to get him to a place where he's being cut up by some gangster and kept alive just for that purpose and why they're keeping him alive for that purpose. Lots of questions about this world, but yeah, I think it's an interesting start. Like I said, it was a very interesting way that they edited it. Like I could tell that they were trying to cut between the stories, but it felt almost like a little jarring because it was like black, fade to black, all the sound out, then a whole new, you know, whole new scene. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm thinking that might've just been for this episode because we have so many intros, but we'll see if that continues or if we're going to start to see things start to bleed more together as potentially more of our characters cross paths. Cause I got to think they have to, uh, it'd be very interesting if they did th tell three separate stories the entire time but I somehow think that's not the case. So yeah, I feel like it's an interesting start. Definitely like the look and the feel, the, the juxtaposition that they're doing of the old 50s serene kind of plastic life versus the harsh reality of this wasteland is very interesting. And uh, the old the, the soundtrack is for those who are into that old school. A lot of old school 50s and, and countries and, and country music in this so far. So very interesting aesthetic and sound. And it's got me intrigued anyways. I definitely want to keep finding out what's going on and seeing where all this is leading up to because I have a feeling that all these three are going to converge on the Enclave somehow, uh, depending on what the Enclave is all about. So yeah, I think, like I said, interesting start. I did enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.